I've been a sculptor since I was 12. That's when I started sculpting. Getting professional gigs when I was 15. When I was a kid, I loved to draw. I loved monster toys. I had a huge Universal Monster collection when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Mighty Max, small little worlds of creatures and monsters and things. I used to just paint garage kits all the time because they're amazing. You know, they're better quality than most toys you can find. I did painting competitions at model conventions. That's where it just kind of evolved into making my own little worlds of things and creatures and characters. My name is Adam Doherty. I'm a sculptor and character designer and filmmaker, all around creative guy. Growing up in a really creative family and having a lot of encouragement from my parents and friends. My dad grew up in the 50s and 60s with the Aurora model kits. He painted those as a kid. When I was young, he would buy me monster model kits, teach me how to paint, stuff like that. And then it was through um, collecting toys that I met other collectors who also were sculptors and painters. My brother being a sculptor for Distortions Unlimited in Colorado. He started there as a painter and saw how they would sculpt things and stuff, learned about clay and all that, and how to make stone molds. So he always had the materials lying around in the garage. Through the encouragement of friends and him, I tried sculpting and that's kind of where it started. I started making latex busts and masks, doing full-size pieces of Frankenstein and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. And from there, I learned about the garage kit community and making your own small-scale statues and resin kits and molding in silicone. I would just sculpt my favorite classic monsters. You know, I was obsessed with the Universal Monsters, so I did a ton of Creature from the Black Lagoon sculptures and Frankenstein and Wolfman and all those. And that just evolved into me getting hired by garage kit companies to sculpt for them, and they would sell the model kits. I was sculpting so much, I was doing terrible in school. I was getting really bad grades, because all I wanted to do was, you know, I had commissions, I had to finish, I had deadlines. With my parents' encouragement, which was amazing, at the end of 10th grade, they encouraged me to drop out of school and focus on sculpting full time, since that's what I was already doing, and obviously what I was super passionate about. I did one week of 11th grade and then I dropped out of school, became a full-time sculptor, sculpted in the basement. I started getting commissions from larger companies doing styrene snap together model kits uh, that were licensed. I, I did a licensed universal pieces and a Elvira model kit. And then it eventually just became um, just a full-time career until when I turned 21 and um, my dad passed away, I got the um, motivation to move out to California, which is where my parents grew up and met, trying to get into the uh, practical effects industry, working on monster movies. And that's kind of where I've been ever since, starting this career in movies and filmmaking and all that stuff. I think I like to create stuff because I feel like any creative person just has a overactive imagination. We all have our own visions of things and funny characters and, and stuff. I really like to create worlds and characters and stuff to uh, inspire kids. I was so inspired by toys when I was little and living in your head and, and playing with little worlds. I always wanted to just create that myself and share it with other people. Getting in the zone when you're creating something and getting in your head distracts you from all the other just dumb stuff that's going on in life. Just kind of lifts your spirits, gives you something to look forward to every day, which I think a lot of people look for. You know, gives you a reason to wake up in the morning, you know, because you got to finish this project that's in your head and get it out of your head. And then once you finish something and you create a character and get that out of your head, all of a sudden you have another goofy one and that's the next six months work and then you'll finish that one and then there's another project you got to do. It's just the constant chase to bring things in your mind into reality and then get the response, you know, of people who enjoy it, people who like it, or people who like seeing you go through the process of the uh, nightmare of making something. And then the reward of, you know, a pat on the back, which is, which is nice, but then um, just being proud of yourself for completing something 
that was nothing from scratch and then getting it out to the world, you know, whether it's just sh posting a photo online or selling it to a collector or something like that. So, I don't know, it's fun. The constant chase is the reward of actually completing something, which is the hardest part. I get a lot of my inspiration from like history. That's why I am such a, I love collecting antiques. I get so inspired by how things were handmade and engineered to last forever. And something as simple as a desk or a shelf was a piece of art that came from a beautiful tree that someone a hundred years ago worked very hard to create. That inspires the heck out of me. I like the concept of creating something that'll last forever, even if it ends up in a thrift store or somewhere unappreciated, it still exists. And somewhere at some point, someone will find it and cherish it. You know, I take a lot of inspiration from history. I take a lot of inspiration from film. I love the creature from the Black Lagoon. I love the environments, the castle on the hill and the foggy woods and just how they made those movies and did the makeup and did the suits and that that's always an inspiration for me. I work with clay, foam, kind of the whole list of stuff you can imagine to sculpt in. I started out using Super Sculpey, um, which you can get at your local hobby store or Michaels or whatever. Eventually you learn about different clays and different ways to mold things and cast things and all that. My new venture is digital sculpting, which I've been a digital sculptor for quite a few years now, but just recently I'm making the transition from sculpting and casting my own products to 3D printing them and actually selling the 3D prints to eliminate mold making and casting. So 3D printing is my new avenue to create things, which um, is going pretty well so far. I think digital sculpting is a pretty amazing tool that I'm still learning the basics of, but it's really fun. When I go about making something, I usually try to do most of the work myself just because I like learning the steps and process, but I do work with a lot of other artists whose work I really admire. When I start out with a piece, I usually sketch it. Instead of doing a regular pencil on paper sketch, I now do a quick digital sculpt sketch. Using ZBrush as a tool, I'll block out the silhouette and kind of shapes and forms and expression of the character. It's a really neat tool to just get a quick concept down. And with that, depending on the piece, if it's a personal piece or if it's a commission, I'll work with another artist or a client who will critique it and give me their opinion. And from there, I'll take it to clay and start blocking it out and finding the character in clay or finishing the digital sketch to be the final digital file that I'll print. I don't know, I don't really keep a strict schedule on finishing a piece. I try to. If it's a personal project, it's usually off hours. I work best at night. If I don't have a day job, I'll usually be on a night shift, so I sleep during the day, I work during the night. For some reason, I'm just more creative at night. I'm very proud of everything I've made for my own personal work. Making these art pieces is super not fun, but the reward of seeing the finished piece is pretty great. I like to deal antiques and restore antiques on my free time. My mom is a very big antique collector. She grew up collecting and restoring a little bit and she got my dad into it. And she taught me about identifying furniture and eras things were made. I love thrift store hunting and finding old pieces of art like a desk or a clock that was handmade a hundred years ago that's now just sitting in a thrift store for nothing compared to what you would find at a Target or an Ikea. Like I like surrounding myself with objects that inspire me, whether it's something that was handmade or something that has character that gets the creative juices going. Most everything I own is you know, 100 or so years old. 
And another reason why I collect all this stuff is a lot of the film projects that I have in mind. Quite a few of them are period pieces. And that's always been an issue is finding set dressings and, you know, a lot of people would be surprised that renting furniture and stuff like that for a set is more expensive than actually just finding it and buying it and just using it around your house as your furniture. I've been collecting since as far back as I can remember. I always had monster toys on shelves. Parents were amazing when it came to giving me awesome Christmas presents. I always had display cases with all my toys. It all built up to having this massive Universal Monster collection. Specifically, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I had a giant Creature from the Black Lagoon collection. My whole life, I was collecting. Specifically, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's a character I'm really just passionate about. I've probably sculpted him more than any other character. I think I've done maybe 15 or 20 creature sculptures. It finally just turned into, I had this really large collection of toys and, and memorabilia and stuff. And then I moved to California. I became passionate about filmmaking and creating, and I never had the money to do it. A struggling 21 year old in California trying to create things and I had no money, but I had this giant massive collection of childhood toys saved up in my hometown, Colorado. When I was 22, I moved back to Colorado and I sold everything I owned. And with that money, I bought a camera and lighting and the equipment I needed to follow my passion of making things and trying to tell stories and create characters, create short films and also document my sculpture work. I wanted to show people the nightmare of having to go through making something for six months out of your life or a year and show people in a creative way all the steps you kind of got to go through to making something. I did my first two short films. I did two music videos, both incorporating different techniques of practical effects while also telling original stories that I was just interested at the time. So the first short film was Hope I Die. It was a period piece about a kid who befriended a ghost and the practical effects technique in that short film was the same effect they used on the ghosts in Poltergeist, which was a rod puppet with fabric draped over it, and then you film it in a water tank, and then you incorporate that footage on top of the footage of a kid in a field, which was my, my story, and the effect is amazing for a, a floating apparition. And the second short film, that I did was using stop motion animation, which is something I've always wanted to do. The short film is about a kid's imagination, a, a little boy in the 1960s playing with his pug dog, Pug Lou. You go back and forth between him playing in his living room with his imagination of him being a spaceman on a planet fighting a pug monster. So the short film was only two minutes long. And from that, a local company is now producing a vinyl toy of the character. The response online of me filming the making of that process on top of the short film itself, I think people just really enjoyed seeing the amount of work that goes into something that's just two minutes long and the amount of work that goes into making stop motion animation and making a puppet and animating it. People really seem to like the character. Right now, I'm just trying to make the next step up to make a, an even better, longer short film, creating new characters and using different techniques of practical effects. I've gotten some of my work licensed before. My work's been in a few toy stores before, but Puglu is the first character that I've ever designed and created that's 100% mine, that's become a toy. So that's really weird to see. It's really cool, especially because Puglu was a pug joke. Me and my friends uh, at work were just really bored and I missed my dog, Buster number three, who lives in Colorado. I was in a creative rut. I really wanted to do something that I didn't get wrapped up in and I didn't get personally invested in and it was just more of a joke. So I was like, I'll just do a stupid pug thing because it's funny. I thought a pug monster would be hilarious. Doing pug Lou was just fun and laughing the whole time and I wasn't expecting anything to come from it. 
but people responded really well to it. It's definitely weird. It's weird seeing him kind of evolve and snowball into something uh, out of my hands. And I'm definitely very proud of Paglu. Right now, I'm working on Grunkle Stan from the show Gravity Falls. It's probably the most detailed piece I've ever made. The full head is punched hair. He has actual removable glasses and a removable hat, and there's a light-up element in it, and he's gonna be a taxidermy display plaque. I've been working on him for maybe six months now. Probably four of those months is, is sculpting. It's been a drag, but probably one I'm most proud of. I do sell my work. I create limited edition collectible statues that I sculpt here in my workshop. The new technique is I'm 3D printing them and I paint those 3D prints myself. I sell those as, as collectible statues or I create custom pieces, large full-size silicone pieces. But everything that I sell and offer is on my website, creaturekid.com and the Pug Loo from Planet P Toys are on creaturekid.com. <laughs>